Hello and welcome to Episerver with Bob, episode three. This again should be a fairly quick one. I just wanted to walk through sort of the bare minimum process for starting a new Episerver site from scratch. So let's run through that real quick. So I've already gone ahead and launched Visual Studio 2019 in this case, and I've already clicked on Create New Project. And so from the Create New Project screen, it's tempting to just click on Episerver Stite. I do have the add-on installed and just get to it. Uh, I actually prefer to just start with a blank solution. It gives me a little more control over where files get put. Uh, for a lot of time, a lot of times for Episerver Sites, it doesn't really matter, but I still like to do this just as a habit. So I click on blank solution. I need to give it a path, and then I need to give it a solution name. I'll call it Episerver Example. The thing to remember is that it's actually going to create a folder underneath this path, presentation slash episode example, and then put the solution in that folder. So I'll go ahead and create this. Now I'm going to go ahead and create the episode project. So we'll right click on the solution, create a new project. Now's the time when I like to use the episode website. I'll go ahead and click next. Uh, as you can see, it's putting it in this location, but I could choose if I wanted to. For example, I could put it in an SRC or source directory, put it somewhere else. I'm going to put it in the root of my project, so it's kind of next to or one level up from the solution file. But I do see some projects that are slash SRC or other paths. And I'm, I think I'm just going to call this web. So uh, it's really up to you and your team how you name these things. I've seen... Uh, it's pretty frequent to see this just be called Episerver Example as well. Um, I've seen some projects that are like ExampleWeb. You know, there's a lot of ways to handle this. I'm just going to call this web for this example. And I'll go ahead and create this. <clears throat> uh, so here's another place where it's tempting. I see a lot of people that will launch a new Episerver site and install the Alloy content and code. Uh, Alloy is okay for example code. I don't really like to use it as a starting point. I think it just includes a lot of stuff that maybe you don't want. Um, I just go with empty. I like to start very clean. So I'm gonna start with an empty episode site and let it build. All right, and it's created the project. Um, every time I create a project, I get this warning that Visual Studio stopped responding for some period of time. Thanks to the episode add-on. I think it's just not doing things as asynchronously as Visual Studio would like, but I just ignore that error. So generally the next step I take is get the database sorted out. By default, the connection string is going to try to create a database uh, using local DB, just in your local data directory. I'd actually prefer just to have the database in SQL Server. And for me, the fastest way to do that is to just create that database. So going to create a database and we'll just call this uh, episerver example. I think I got that mostly correct. And then I need to use that database. Okay, so now I'm connected to episerver example. So in this project that I just created, episerver example, there are the NuGet packages inside packages. So I'm going to go into those packages and I'm looking for CMS Dot core. There's episerver.cms.core. If you have multiple copies in the folders, just pick the one with the biggest version number. The reason I'm going into this folder is because in the tools directory, there is the SQL that we need to, uh, to run to create an empty database. Now I've already put that on my clipboard over here. So I'm going to paste that in here and execute this query. This runs pretty quickly. The query is done. Uh, if you want, you can scroll through the messages and just look for any errors. Uh, it's always succeeded for me, so uh, that should be good to go. And then we just need to change our connection string. Obviously, this will depend on the system that you're using, but for me, my local database is just dot, and I don't need any of this. The initial catalog, did I cut? Oh, nope. <laughs> uh, what did I say? Example, no. Episerver example. Uh, the connection timeout is good. Integrated security. I'm using IIS Express, so I can go ahead and just leave integrated security on because 
it runs as my user and my user has access to the database. And as always, make sure multiple active result sets is set to true and launch the site. Now when the site does come up, you will get a resource not found 404 error. That's to be expected because you have an empty database, you have no home page, and so it makes sense that the home page would 404. However, if I go to slash EpiServer, that will take me to the login page. And I can log in using my Windows login because out of the box, EpiServer is using the uh, multiplexing membership provider which uses the Windows membership provider and so it is actually logging me in through Windows. Most websites now are using identity provider and so that'll probably be a future video is stripping all of this out and setting up something else. But that is it. That is the bare minimum uh, setup required to launch an neighbor server site, at least the way I like to launch them. So anyway, I hope this was at least a little bit valuable. And again, as always, thanks for watching. I'll maybe see you next time.